This is Unexpected with Hannah Love. In this podcast, you will gain a new perspective of how God loves you enough to call you to things that you couldn't have imagined for yourself. Once upon a time, I took an aptitude test and failed. Honestly, I didn't even know it was possible to fail an aptitude test. Apparently, though, when the results are inconclusive, that's what it's considered. The goal was to pinpoint my strongest aptitudes and marry them with a career that matched my desire and skill set to pursue it. Instead, it made me feel like something was wrong with me. My results basically said there is no box to stick you in. At the time, I was fresh out of college and looking for a suitable career, so imagine how defeating it was to hear they couldn't even determine a good job fit for me. Through the years, though, I've thought about that failed test, and I can't help but smile. It was a lesson and a reminder. I wasn't made to fit into a box, and neither were you. Sometimes we can get so hung up on fitting in that we forget God never made us to. We were never meant for that. The moment you were conceived, God breathed a unique identity and specific calling into your spirit. He took precious care to form you in your mother's womb with purpose and beauty, incomparable to anyone else. If I had let myself be discouraged all those years ago, I would have listened to the world and settled for the title failure. Thankfully, I already knew that a test couldn't tell me who I was or what I was qualified for. Only God did that. He still does. Now, let's take it a step further and think about who in the Bible may have felt this way. Who felt like they didn't fit into a box? Who felt like a failure? Although we could delve into a number of characters that God used through the good book, my first thought goes to Moses. Most of you are likely familiar with the story of the baby in the basket, the boy who was taken in by the daughter of Pharaoh and later led God's people out of Egypt to the Promised Land. But how often have you really put yourself in those shoes? Or (laughs) sandals, maybe? (laughs) Here's a more detailed look into the context of Moses' life. I'll read straight from Scripture here so I don't miss any high points, beginning with Exodus chapter 1, verses 8 through 22. A new king came to power in Egypt who didn't know Joseph. He spoke to his people in alarm. There are way too many of these Israelites for us to handle. We've got to do something. Let's devise a plan to contain them, lest if there's a war they should join our enemies or just walk off and leave us. So they organized them into work gangs and put them to hard labor under gang foremen. They built the storage cities Pithom and Ramses for Pharaoh. But the harder the Egyptians worked them, the more children the Israelites had. Children everywhere! The Egyptians got so they couldn't stand the Israelites and treated them worse than ever, crushing them with slave labor. They made them miserable with hard labor, making bricks and mortar and backbreaking work in the fields. They piled on the work, crushing them under the cruel workload. The king of Egypt had a talk with the two Hebrew midwives. One was named Shifra and the other Pua. He said, When you deliver the Hebrew women, look at the sex of the baby. If it's a boy, kill him. If it's a girl, let her live. But the midwives had far too much respect for God and didn't do what the king of Egypt ordered. They let the baby boys live. The king of Egypt called the midwives. Why didn't you obey my orders? You've let those babies live. The midwives answered, Pharaoh, the Hebrew women aren't like Egyptian women. They're vigorous. Before the midwife can get there, they've already had the baby. God was pleased with the midwives the people continued to increase in number, a very strong people. And because the midwives honored God, God gave them families of their own. So Pharaoh issued a general order to all his people. Every boy that is born, drown him in the Nile, but let the girls live. Exodus 2 verses 1 through 15 goes on to read, A man from the family of Levi married a Levite woman. The woman became pregnant and had a son. She saw there was something special about him and hid him. She hid him for three months. When she couldn't hide him any longer, she got a little basket made of papyrus, waterproofed it with tar and pitch, and placed the child in it. Then she set it afloat in the reeds at the edge of the Nile. The baby's older sister found herself a vantage point a little way off and watched to see what would happen. 
Pharaoh's daughter came down the Nile to bathe. Her maiden strolled on the bank. She saw the basket boat floating in the reeds and sent her maid to get it. She opened it and saw the child, a baby, crying. Her heart went out to him. She said, This must be one of the Hebrew babies. Then his sister was before her. Do you want me to go and get a nursing mother from the Hebrew so she can nurse the baby for you? Pharaoh's daughter said, Yes, go. The girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter told her, Take this baby and nurse him for me. I'll pay you. The woman took the child and nursed him. After the child was weaned, she presented him to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her son. She named him Moses, pulled out, saying, I pulled him out of the water. Time passed. Moses grew up. One day he went and saw his brothers, saw all the hard labor. Then he saw an Egyptian hit a Hebrew, one of his relatives. He looked this way and then that, and when he realized no one was in sight, he killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. The next day, he went out there again. Two Hebrew men were fighting. He spoke to the man who started it. Why are you hitting your neighbor? The man shot back. Who do you think you are telling us what to do? Are you going to kill me the way you killed that Egyptian? Then Moses panicked. Words had gotten out. People know about this. Pharaoh heard about it and tried to kill Moses, but Moses got away to the land of Midian. Okay, so what have we gathered here? From the get-go, Moses was born into some really heavy circumstances that left little room for survival, much less success. I mean, he was born into slavery and sentenced to death on the day he drew his first breath. By all accounts, this doesn't feel like it's going to end well. But unexpected circumstances are God's favorite places to work. In the midst of a hopeless place, God gave that baby's mother the wisdom, courage, and faith to release him down the Nile in a basket of reeds. From that moment, everything changed. Moses was rescued and raised as an Egyptian. Not only an Egyptian, but the adopted son of royalty. He likely had access to the highest level of education and palace privilege. However, that foundation his mother laid was still beneath it all. Who he was taught to be did not match up with a lineage running through his veins. He must have had a tremendous sense of confusion over where he fit in. To be honest, that feeling of not belonging probably followed him throughout his life. Case in point, even when Moses attempts to intervene with the abuse of the Hebrew slave and kills a man who is striking him, there were no thanks given for the deed, at least on record. The following day, the Israelites even mocked him for trying to discourage the fight between the Hebrew men. Sheesh, a guy can't win for losing. Next thing you know, Moses was forced to flee from Pharaoh into the land of Midian. So there he is, rejected by his own people, and simultaneously forced to flee death at the hands of the ones who raised him. Honestly, at this point, I would be in pretty bad shape myself. I would be so confused about where I belonged. I would be full of questions about why I was the way I was and why my story was unfolding the way it was, too. It's so easy to breeze past this place Moses must have found himself in. After all, we know the rest of the story. On the big picture pan out, we're able to see how God is working in every little detail of this mess. It feels so complicated. And truly, it is so complicated because God orchestrates His work tediously in the details. In every situation, He is working in it. He brings beauty from brokenness. Hello, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Let's review. Moses was born an Israelite and raised an Egyptian. He was wealthy educated and privileged, but felt no sense of belonging to either world. He was born into one culture, but taught to live in another. Complicated? Yep. Unexpected? Yes. God was preparing Moses for big things. He could speak the language, knew the customs, and was familiar with the protocols of the Egyptians. He had the blood of God's chosen people in his veins, though and his foundation was laid in his first years with his mother as his wet nurse. He was preserved from a sentence of death as a baby, rescued out of the waters of the Nile, 
and never fit into a single box. A basket, maybe, (laughs) but never a box. Every aspect of his life was unexpected. So, does it come as a surprise that God uses this man to do something only he was positioned to do? Oh, and one last detail. The Pharaoh's daughter gave the name Moses to the child when she rescued him from the Nile. The name in Hebrew means to pull out or draw out of water. God is not a God of coincidence. God is not a God of chance or happenstance. He is in every detail of every moment. An Egyptian woman gave this child a Hebrew name that spoke to his very calling, Moses, the one who drew God's people out of slavery. Moses, the one who parted the waters of the Red Sea by God's authority. Moses was an outcast, a murderer, and a man with a burden of feeling like he didn't belong. He was sometimes afraid and even full of doubt. Moses was just a man, and God chose him. Despite his weaknesses and likely because of them, God chose him. Moses goes on to do tremendous things on behalf of God and his people. He goes on to perform signs and miracles, meet with God on the mountaintop, and deliver the Ten Commandments to the nation of Israel. He goes down as a founding father of the Jewish people. Flawed? Sure, but also chosen and called. This man allowed God to use him as a leader for God's glory and a rescuer of God's children. If you find yourself in a complicated and unexpected season, I urge you to take a breath and get excited because chances are these are the exact areas, the very seasons God is using to refine you and your story for His purposes. Today, I want to remind you, you were called to be different and set apart. So the next time you're tempted to believe what culture or people tell you about you, ask yourself if it lines up with what God has already told you about who you are. You are His child, worthy and unconditionally loved, and that is the only truth worth living by. Thank you so much for listening today. If this episode has encouraged you, please feel free to share it with your family and friends. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world today, and my hope is that this show is a candle in the dark. 